a lot of boys are trash, and I stand by that statement. My name's Fat Tony. I'm a Nigerian American, originally from Houston, Texas. I'm an artist, rapper, host, DJ, all sorts of shit. I'm Tisby Harwis, and if you have a romantic conundrum, we have a rapper here to answer those questions for you. Talk to me. <laughs> What's the worst date you've ever been on? The worst date I've ever been on, I once went out with this girl, and we were just like talking about like people that I knew who are other artists and stuff, and she figured out that I was friends with this one guy that she was a big fan of, and she would not stop talking about him all night. For like the rest of the night, she would only talk about this fool. She put up this fool's Instagram. I'm just like, man, I'm here looking like a sucker. <laughs> Do you find that like apps like Instagram or even Twitter work better than formalized dating apps like Tinder or? I'd say, as far as dating goes, I prefer Instagram because you can really see a person's style. I can see your sense of humor from your social media. Like it just, it just shows a lot more about the person than I think swiping through endless faces. Right. Do you have any tips for people who have a habit of dating musicians, uh, asking for a friend? You know what? I think that music people like myself tend to have a bad rep, you know? And I don't think that it's entirely true. Some of it is based on a little truth, if you keep it real with Some you. of us have experience that would dispute that fact. Don't count them out though. Don't count us artists out, cause we ain't all bad. And you know, even when we are bad, we ain't bad all the time. You know, you gotta take the good with the bad sometimes, man. We cool, man. Come not on. all musicians. Come on, man, not, not all of us. Some of these people who are like, these like entertainer types, these people who are kind of for themselves a little bit, at least they can offer you a little bit of fun, you know what I mean? They ain't gonna like give you the same old boring, you know. I have no money, I'm not funny, I live in a studio apartment with two other guys. <laughs> and now Tony's gonna answer some anonymously submitted questions from the audience. We have a question from someone who calls herself misanthrope. Um, and her problem is that she's not in a relationship. How do I learn to be more comfortable being hashtag forever alone, especially around the holidays when it's impossible to avoid offensive questions like, why aren't you dating? And why don't you have a boyfriend? And are you a lesbian? Well, I think all those questions are rude as You need to slap whoever said them to you because it's none of their business about your relationship status, your sexuality, or any of that. That's completely up to you and you alone. Now, far as getting comfortable with being forever alone, I feel like that's kind of a dangerous thought process and a dangerous space to be in emotionally. I don't think you should view it as like this negative, terrible thing because being in a relationship isn't everything. And I doubt anybody that really cares about your, your well-being is gonna ask you, why don't you have a boyfriend and are you a lesbian? We have a question from someone named Romcom Lover. Single and now resorting to dating apps because the guys at bars are too young. What's a good opening line to use on dating apps? I'd be direct to say, hey, what up? You know, if there's something on their profile that you're a fan of or can relate to, maybe lead in with that. Just don't come off with any of that cheesy rom-com shit that you're a fan of. <laughs> We have a question from someone named Scrawny and Slutty. And Scra oh, hold up, hold up. Yo, salute on that name, you a wild boy. Scrawny and Slutty would like to know, should I be friends with my ex? I think it all depends on the circumstances of how your relationship ended and on the personality of your ex. If your ex is trash, toxic, bad for your life, get rid of them. My best advice is that you trust your gut Trust your instincts. If you feel funny about a situation, listen to that. If you feel good about a situation, listen to that. And don't play yourself. Mm. Are you friends with a lot of your exes? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> My partner never helps with dishes, cleaning bathrooms, daily housing upkeep. I've spoken with her about this issue on several different occasions. One time I was mean, several times I was nice about it. She still doesn't help keep the space clean. How do we get her to help out around the apartment more without constantly nagging her? Ooh. The thing is, if you're living together, you're not helping out, you're living there. Mm -hmm. That means you should do the thing, right? I think that you need to have a serious talk with your partner and let her know that she has to contribute. And I know you might feel like you're nagging them, 
I feel like the goal of most relationships is that you want them to grow. You want to stay with this person and keep going like different levels, you know? You like live in this home now, maybe you want to get a bigger home later, maybe you want to start a family later, who knows? With all those homes comes a shitload of dishes and a bunch of dust and a bunch of dirt and you gotta clean it up. Bottom line. So nag them, nag her ass. Tell her to step her shit up. What's the best romantic advice you've ever gotten? And don't be stingy. The best romantic advice I've ever gotten is to be honest with myself and with the people that you deal with. You know, be straight up about what you're looking for, about what your situation is, if you're in a relationship, if you're getting out of one, if you're in an open relationship, a closed relationship, whatever your situation is, be forthright about it because the other person needs to know and they should give you the same respect.